Teamwork is everything on a trip like this, you know? It's a difficult thing to come out here and get out into these big glaciers. There's a lot of uh, a lot of lines where we would hike up, you know, as a pair, just to you know watch over each other and help each other climb and ski. To be able to, you know, work to get to the top of something with with a good friend and share that moment, ski the line, you know, with them or after them or before them, and get to the bottom and just uh, <laughs> you know share that enjoyment is incredible. You guys should hurry up with those tents and help me with this wall. <laughs> if we weren't getting along out here, we wouldn't be getting anything done. It's the best time of your life!
Yeah, well, hope, ideally, hopefully yeah, the down climb scary. off the ridge is just super straightforward. Like, because then you'd be. Yeah. I'm not willing. You saw what we went through today. Like, yeah, I'm exactly. not. <clears throat> that everything is reasonable. Like, you can just take this ridge all the way over. Yeah, like you can go around this peak, and then the next peak you can sneak the back, and then you get like onto the ridge, and it looks nice, and then we can't see the other side, so mm -hmm. we don't know if it's if we can ski down that face and then climb up, or make that ridge walk. We have to leave like almost at like midnight or one o'clock in the morning, pretty much. The biggest unknown factor is just getting over there. Thank <laughs> you. 
As you've gathered, a weather briefing is taking place. The total weather consideration indicates all of the weather favorable for our scheduled event. Weather can make or break a test shot. That's why you want to know up to the last moment just how you stand with the elements. so many different kinds of snow. It's one of the most beautiful things on Earth. Different every day you go up and your lines are changing and the snow is changing. And it's a new sensation every day. The cloud is still rising. 70,000 feet now. The last testament I heard is true. Grandstand seat here to one of the most momentous events in the history of science. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. Storm skiing is probably my favorite kind of skiing. Just being in the, in the woods when it's snowing is a calming feeling, I think. Being surrounded by 100% nature and total quietness. It's just a different feeling. You don't really get that too many places and we're lucky to live here.
Fracture, fracture. I'm just gonna make a move and keep on seeing the spine here. I'm just making sure I'm not gonna be in a bad fall line of anything. Hey, Ty, this is Sam. I want you to go ahead and uh, stay there and we're gonna get this picked up. I definitely think that nature offers the ultimate testing ground for men to challenge themselves. So many options and so many variables. You have three skiers looking up at a line, and it's guaranteed that they each would have their own way of reading the terrain, and it's guaranteed they would each ski it differently.
tough to really say you're being a, a really environmentally conscious person if you're a skier, you know, unless you're living in the mountains in a cabin and, uh, and getting up there by your own means of ski touring or hiking. The fact that we can get anywhere out of these valleys is only because logging and mining is there. It's, uh, it's basically created access for us to get up there and without those roads we wouldn't be there. Shades of black is where I come from I was born into sacrifice when I was young Three shades of black is what makes us strong And we all wear it like a uniform of chosen ones Three The darkness gives us our thrill. Cause the darkness gives us our thrill. Love doing it, it's my whole life. It's exactly what I want to do, and I get so much enjoyment out of it. There's no way you can really say you feel bad for doing what we're doing. At the same time, it would be great if we're not wrecking as much by getting this amount of enjoyment out of nature. We came up with this far-fetched plan to go down to Chile and ski the inside of this crater, but really none of us had any idea if it was even possible. Uh -huh. He was mentioned the volcano erupted in 1960 and they have to evacuate all his family and all this forest where we are now is just regrowing. None of us really are any good at horseback riding whatsoever. Yeah. Go. Riding up a horse in your ski gear and knowing you're going to go skiing is just the craziest thing you can ever imagine. Day three at base camp, one of our guides, Nico, woke us up at five in the morning and told us it was going to be Bluebird. got to the top and we weren't on just any volcano. It was a volcano with these Alaska style spines and to see that where we were going to go ski was like a dream come true. We'd all ski down to the same spot and just give each other a high five and uh, throw our skins back on and go for another one.
about a year after we were at the volcano, it fully erupted. It's pretty crazy. I don't really know what it means in the grand scheme of things, but that place that we were is now gone. When I found out I was coming to Greenland, I didn't really think of what the culture was going to be like, and that's kind of one of the biggest shocks. I think there is something bigger about coming to a place like this and seeing how other people live that helps you appreciate those things in your own life and also helps you, you know, realign. The people who live here year-round, they're pretty much born here and die here. <laughs> what leads you to this moment? I wonder about that all the time. This is me. This is what I'm doing and this is where I am. And all the little strange things that went into making that happen. It's kind of hard to really put into words how remote we are, but we're just basically taking care of ourselves. It was definitely fun to be out there camping at night and hiking all the lines that we skied. You wake up, the sun was shining, you look out your tent door and there's just big peaks, skiable lines everywhere.
we all hiked up this big face and it was kind of a struggle. And I wasn't sure, I kind of wanted to ski the face that we had climbed and I also wanted to ski the, the Kawar that Callie was gonna drop. And in the end, I ended up skiing the face and looking up and it just looked so gnarly what Callie was dropping into. We had a couple goals on this trip. The first one was to get to the top of Mount Magoon, which is the second highest peak in Morocco. Looking out over the barren desert, it's pretty hard not to wonder, is this our future? <laughs> the more you travel, it's interesting to see how differently people live from you. But we're all connected in the same problem. I'm privileged to have grown up in, in the mountains and skied my whole life and I want to see my kids still being able to ski and their kids being able to ski. It was all my son's fault. He was in grade six and he wanted to go skiing and I says, well, if you're going skiing, I'm going skiing too because I'm not driving you to the hill and coming back home again.
This will be my eighth year of 100 plus days if I get another six more in. Who says you can't drive with ski boots on? Hey? <laughs> the old girl working real hard, got a big load. <laughs> I'm Mary Woodward, and I'm 75 years old. Got a free pass this year. I've been skiing since I was 23. I found bud and I found powder. <laughs> Such a free feeling. You forget how old you are. <laughs> you feel like you can do anything. We have the nicest snow in the countryside. We used to get a lot more, but uh, can't help that. So we just uh, come out and ski once here every day. And then over here we got Dennis. They call me the tail gunner because I'm the last guy who comes down. If anybody gets hurt, I'm the one who comes to save you. Something that way I can go the slowest. Nice. I don't like the speed like they do. Bud probably knows every tree out here by name. I broke a ski here a couple years ago. Got a guy in my ear talking right now, sorry. Ski good or eat wood? But you can't hear anybody. Unless you've got the earpiece on. And I like to hear people. Oh, Mary's the only other person that shows up just about every day. All the others have got bad legs, bad knees. Well, winter has changed over the years. I guess we'll still be skiing a long time, just that we're used to skiing in knee-deep powder. What's happening to all the snow, Shannon? Uh, it's turning brown and moldy. <laughs> but you can't eat yellow snow. I know, because it's dark or tappy. Only the freshy fresh. Well, I eat from the ground also. Uh, You're just a little doggy. Uh, I ski with my brother and I like it when he farts. I guess the soul of winter is in the Kootenays for a lot of people. They come here for that reason. I, I think you can find the soul in other places too. Yeah, my parents definitely gave me the biggest gift I could ever get, which is love for the mountains. Super important to be able to pass that on. Skis are worth more than the truck. <laughs> you have a constituency that's out on the hill, and every one of them, by virtue of what they're doing, is an environmentalist. And you're converting people every day through the, the beauty of the natural world and the opportunity for for redemption and a sense of freedom on the hill. Best day ever. There it is. <laughs> Just do anything. 
can go any place. And you do. You get to the bottom, and you just think, oh, okay, let's do it again. It's that good. Skier's connection with nature in the mountains is incredible and it puts us at the forefront of what's going on with our environment. Climate uh, is too intangible. It's just, it, it's been called the perfect problem. You can't see it. Most people don't understand it. And uh, even though it's happening, it's too slow uh, to be tangible to most people. Every generation in history has had their own big challenge to deal with. And this one is ours. It's money. You, you have corporations uh, funding political campaigns and working on uh, quarterly profit uh, calendars, and it's impossible to take your eye off that. I get revolve around people feeling badly. They feel bad about the car they drive, about the life they live. And I think that this isn't about you. It's about how we all become part of a bigger solution. And we're all hypocrites, of course. It's a fossil fuel-based society. But we have to all work together toward a common goal. Skiers always scout difficult runs. Think of climate change as the, as the same thing. While you're scouting and thinking about it and planning action, you get increasingly nervous, or I do. And the second you drop in, you feel this incredible sense of relief because you have an opportunity to succeed or fail on your own terms right now. And all the fear and anxiety and planning is over. environmental crisis is a it's a huge puzzle and I think it's just a matter of finding your own role as a person and finding our role as a society person. Those are the people, not the heroes, who has solved all the globe's problems for thousands of years and will continue to. It's all about all the little different things that each of us can be doing.
just like me. JP has been the most influential freestyle skier in the last 10 years by far. He's innovated some of the coolest tricks you see in the park and the backcountry even now. He's on the Solomon team when they first started making twin tips. Tell me about the new skiing, man. I don't know, but your girlfriend just uh, flash us. Do it again. All we did is made a couple small changes to the technology already available. Fast forward 10 years and you see the tricks that kids are doing today and it's absolutely mind-blowing. You can find parts of a system that need to be tweaked and that cause radical change. And instead of thinking about what's, what's been happening before you or after you, like you have to embrace the fact that it's actually happening right now. Skiers' minds have been open. The general skier now is, is not fearing change, they're expecting change and they're actually demanding change. They want to see improvements, so. That's pretty cool. It's about allowing yourself to see things from a different angle entirely. You know, for example, in my case, I could be like, I'll never use helicopters, I'll never fly around the world anymore. Might as well not use skis anymore because those are manufacturers and factories and that's bad. And just like basically stop doing everything I'm doing and like staying home and trying not to breathe too much. Like if you try to be less and do less, like it's, that's not progression, you know? You're not really moving forward. You're basically just slowing down. But I don't think it's about doing less. I think it's about doing more. It's about being more creative. It's about being more active. We have to make a world where when you fly in an airplane, 
it doesn't produce carbon emissions. When you ski, it doesn't produce carbon emissions. Here we are at the base of Blackholm, right next to the Fitzsimmons Micro Hydro Renewable Energy Power Plant. It produces annually what we consume annually as an entire ski operation. Humans have this way of making the impossible possible. Just look at Greg Hill, he skied to her two million feet in one year. The most important thing to remember is that you have to engage in your world. The analogy is a ski slope in the backcountry. You don't just ski the slope. You have to know precisely what's going on on that aspect and that part of the world. And that's how you have to engage society as well. There might not be a lot of people who stop to think about it, but the time spent in the mountains have really taught us really valuable lessons. It's almost a kind of asymmetric warfare. The, the ski industry is small, but it's interesting, and so it can drive change. It parallels the environment perfectly because there's no other choice. We are put into the environment, and we have to perform. We seek these moments. We look for the unknown. We look for just a little bit harder than before. And that's why people go. The only way to find out is to drop in and try.
And the women shed tears And a preacher prayed to the Lord When they opened the safe There was nothing for them So they strode down through the train What a miserable sight These desperate men Robbing old folks for the gold watch chain Becky K. U. Luniaka. But we all know he was nothing but a Missouri farm boy, just fighting to stay alive. Teriyaki beef stick. Native Americans used to dine on a similar treat. They called it meat pemmican. <laughs> If you listen to the wind, there's a ghost of a chance You can still hear old Jesse call 